doing a radiographic interpretation and it's showing which quadrant? First, first quadrant. First quadrant. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, we're showing like two one, one one, one two and one three. Okay, so two one, one one, one two and one three. Okay. Can you identify what is this tooth here? One four. Probably one yeah. four, yes. Okay. So which is uh, the can we go to the line marks? What do we see? Maxillary anterior is always a tough area. Mm. Too many things overlapping mm. there. Tell us. Mm, there's Sin a maxillary sinus, sinus border. Sinus? Are you sure? Imagining, imagine it on your own face. Hmm? Nostril. Nostril, <laughs> okay, yeah. It's too too yeah. forward to be the sinus, <laughs> right? You're too anterior to be a sinus, yeah, okay. Anything else? Suture. What is that? Intermaxillary suture. Intermaxillary suture. Okay. Anything else? Incisive canal. Incisive canal. Where should the incisive canal be actually? Yeah, <laughs> it should be between the uh, somewhere there. But in this radiograph, we are not able to see it very clearly. It's still there. Can you see this diamond shape area here? What is that? Septum. Septum? Can you talk what would that area be? I mean, where is it exactly in the organ in the uh, that region? <coughs> yeah, that's correct where you're pointing out to. Right? In under just the under the nose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the septum. The septum. septum. Needle septum? Needle septum should be uh, mm. cartilage, right? Mm. So, what Nave, shadow should it be? Spine. Yes, anterior nasal spine. Exactly. So, that's the anterior nasal spine. Okay. So, there's one more here. What? Yes. What is that? Location? Above canine. Above the canine. Yeah, so it looks. Is it hollow or is it having a bone in it? What, what does it look like? Based on the radiolucency and the radio opacity. It looks like having bone. Bone, okay. So we can't make out everything's mm -hmm. looking almost the same, right? So that actually is your maxillary sinus flaw. Okay, so can write down there maxillary sinus and this is your nasal fossa so where do they they meet and this this inverted area y is called as a in, yeah it's called as an inverted y okay so that's the inverted y area where they meet all right so do we have any more landmarks left reasonably covered most of it Okay, now let's go to the area of interest. Okay, so what are we seeing? Which is our area of interest now? One, two, one, one, and one, two. Very good. What are you seeing? Yes. Okay, can we start with the crown first? Okay. Yeah, that is a large radiolucency. Would you agree with the extent that is drawn out here? Or would you want to make it a little smaller or bigger? Yes. Can we outline the area of interest? Yeah. Okay. Can you draw out one outline which you think is correct? And can anybody else draw another outline? Yes, try. Come on. Give it a try. How about the lower border? Where is it extending up to? Let it be. Yeah. <coughs> try, try. Okay. How about you? Let's try. How, where is the extent of the uh, radiolucency? Yes, you're right. That is the extent. 
okay so it's actually extending quite a bit so if you were to look at the entire extent of the radiolucency it is actually that is the extent it's quite big mm -hmm. right so now let's look at the tooth per se what are we seeing in the tooth <coughs> Have you identified something which is not normal here or that is not uh, belonging to that area? You mean the retainer? Yes, there's a retainer. Very good. Okay. There's a retainer. So that means what impression does this give you? The patient must be been orthodontically treated. Okay. Orthodontically treated. Look at the tooth. Okay. We have a small radiographic uh, fault here which is uh, an area which has got a uh, little less exposed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we also have can't really make out but in the lateral what do we see here yeah what is that yeah yeah so it must be a bit of blob of composite there composite. holding the retainer okay so there must be one on the central incisor also which we're not able to very clearly see right so <coughs> what else is different in the central incisor in the Pulp, mm -hmm. very good. Pulp, yeah. So look at the wide pulp chambers. Which is, what is the normal size of a pulp chamber? The adjacent tooth. Compare it. Yeah. Okay, and then this tooth is really, really large, right? Okay. So what else is abnormal? Is this a bone loss? Yes, that's bone loss. Very good. Mm -hmm. So where should the normal bone height be? One millimeter below. Okay. One millimeter can be. Can you point out what should the one millimeter look like? Somewhere there, and then that's normal then, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it? Mm -hmm. Level CJ. Yes. Anybody wants to say something here? At the CJ or about few mm below CJ. Is it correct? Somewhere there is CJ. So if yeah, this is there is bone loss here, perhaps you know a few mm or three to four mm, which is still considered reasonably okay. Yeah, but <coughs> and then you can see that there's an extent of bone here also. So all over the anterior has a little bit of bone loss there. Yeah, anything else normal in this area? We've done with the crown. Let's look at uh, and the pulp. Uh, let's uh, look at the root. Yeah, what is the resorbed. resorbed root? Resorbed. Compare it to the adjacent root. Where should the length of the root be of a central incisor? Central incisor. Central incisor. Yeah. Somewhere. Mm. Can you point out where the root of the central incisor? No. No. Come on. Try again. Somewhere there. Mm. Can you draw out the outline of the uh, pipal? of the root yeah. somewhere there okay so so that means how much of the root has got resorbed if you were to divide the root into three uh, three, three yeah <coughs> one, third one third is gone so mm -hmm. can you divide them into three th into thirds so yeah. like okay that's the Apical, middle, and apical one third. So nearly the apical one third entirely got resorbed, right? So that is something very interesting to note. Okay. So what else are we saying? Now let's look at the description of the um, <coughs> the, the entire. What are we saying? Is this radiolucent or radio opaque? Radiolucent. Radiolucent. Uh, very large radiolucency, right? So and very interesting to note is that it is extremely radiolucent here but less radiolucent here mm -hmm. so why is it so why is what is the reason one is early stage one is yeah, are stage. they both connected to each other yes yes yeah, yeah they are connected to each other so one is early one is late what do we mean by that it's progressing it's progressing okay so that means which one is which area is uh, more advanced yeah 
the one which is most, most radiolucent. So what does it indicate? The area that is most radiolucent. That means what has happened there? Reduction. Okay, has led to? Bone resorption. Bone resorption, yes. So you, you literally have a vacant area there. There's nothing there. It's air, empty. And so just soft tissue, some amount of blood vessels and you know, some granulation tissue and, and a lot of bone is lost. Whereas the next adjacent area, which is relatively less radiolucent, that means is still undergoing bone loss. So that means if you, now looking at the radiograph, you really don't know the um, duration of this lesion, but it really looks chronic. Mm -hmm. So if you were to leave this lesion for a few more months longer, it's going to end up with a larger, larger cavity. So now looking at this large radiolucency, can you tell me, <clears throat> yeah, what is that? What have you just drawn out? Drawing the border of uh, how did you know that that's the border? Mm. Is there something very peculiar there? The cyst. How do you know it's a cyst? Because there's demarcation. Demarcation, yes, very good. With demarcation, uh, how is the demarcation created? What is that called as? Yeah. Extent. Yeah. How, how do you know? Eggshell. Okay. Yeah, eggshell. Yeah. It's true. But how how do you know that that's the end? Is it like the boundary or what else is that called as? Cyst wall. Cyst wall, very good. So we, the cyst wall is ending there. So how do we know that it's, uh, I mean, what has it done to the bone? How come? It's, okay, the bone is resorbed, but there is a well demarcated, like she said, cyst mm -hmm. wall. Whereas a lower boundary doesn't look so well demarcated. What does that tell you? Remodeling of the, of bone. the bone is happening. So that means that was what and what was the uh, lower border. If this is supposed to be well demarcated and this is not well demarcated. That means what is the uh, pathology that is happening here and what is it that's happening here? Acute and chronic, okay. Mm. So that means this is what? Acute or chronic? Chronic. Chronicity has created what here? How is it that there's a nice defined boundary? Because the chronic progress is slower, so the bone has time to uh, remodel. Uh, remodel. Very good, so that's a sclerotic margin. Correct, and that's mm. typical of cyst. cyst. Okay, so then what has happened to this boundary here? If there is no sclerotic margin in this area so that means what is happening to the bone here yeah resorption so that means from a phase of being nice and well demarcated this is turning out to become a uh, area which is you know probably uh, extending. So what does the cyst get converted into when it uh, is not a cyst anymore based on your uh, <clears throat> what you call uh, the, the sequelae of pulpitis what can it be turned into? Abscess. abscess. Very good. So probably this area is turning into an abscess. Right. So we're looking at a cyst that is the where the bone is dynamic undergoing changes and is not in nice and well defined anymore and it's turning out to become an abscess due to process of uh, bone remodeling, right? So, <clears throat> what, would we, what would your radiographic diagnosis be for this kind of a case? Yeah? Okay, as soon as you look at the tooth, what is your diagnosis? Peripical? Okay, but before that, what would you have said? Cyst. Peripical cyst, you're right. It's a peripical cyst. Okay, but if you were to give a really mature diagnosis, you can call it as an infected peripical cyst. Okay, because it shows that it's turning into an abscess here. Right, and can you tell me what, what should we do with this tooth? Remove the cyst. First remove the cyst, okay. Denucleation, okay. Do you also start another process before you do enucleation? RCT. RCT for RCT. which one? For one, 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 one
one one R C T and then what do you do for one two? Do you need to do anything or should would it be normal? Looks normal. Looks normal, are you sure? Yeah? Considering that there is Yeah. Should we do be testing this tooth? Yeah, what should that test be? Pulp vitality, correct. You need to check whether this tooth is, you know, really normal or not. Okay? And that would be the <coughs> treatment plan. Right, so is there anything else about this uh, radiograph that we need to cover? I think that's pretty much understood. Yeah? Okay, uh, that's about it. Thank you.